Generally, with paper 2, most learners find it a bit difficult. But now let's look at some techniques on how we can approach this type of paper. We're looking at the 2018 paper. So here we go. So we are given a table and the table tells us that there is a maximum of three participants uh, per school. And by looking at the relationship, we can see that the number of schools have been given to us except for A and B on this table. Generally, we look at what's the relationship between the different items on a table when we're given a question like this. And we normally go to the ones that are given. And if we look at the 900 and 2700, we can see that if they were speaking about three learners per school, so obviously the 900 was multiplied by three in order for us to get 2700. So now that we know that we are multiplying by three, so we have an idea how to work out A and B. So by looking at A, we go to the 367 and we've got to multiply that by three because that's the same thing that happened on the second column. So we multiply that answer by three and that's how we arrive at 1101. And coming all the way to the B, if we look at that, we obviously have to work backwards and we have to take the 15726 and divide it by three and then we'll arrive at 5242. Two. So each school must have one teacher who invigilates the writing of the Olympiad. Calculate the number of schools that entered the Olympiad if a total of 32,712 people were involved on the day the Olympiad was written. So we know that there were three learners per school and every school comes with one teacher. So that's four people from each school. And then they gave us the total amount of people that were at this event. So all we just need to do is take the total amount of people and divide it by each school having four per people and then we arrive at how many schools we have all together which is 8178. So we are given test scores by the three pupils Matuli, Bianca and Kotso that's presented to us and we are asked to calculate Matuli's median percentage mark. Now in calculating the median percentage mark we must realize that the steps are that we need to first arrange them from highest to lowest. Now looking at Matuli's marks, there are 10 marks there. Now this means that if there is an even amount of marks presented to us, then we need to take the both middle, to middle numbers and we divide it by two. So this is what we need to do in our next step. So when arranging Matuli's marks from highest to lowest, we find that the two middle numbers are 58 and 62. And we add those numbers up and divide it by two and we get an answer of 60. We are asked to calculate Bianca's mean mark. Now the term mean is another word for average. So by average, we mean we add up all the marks and divide by the amount of marks we've given. Now, if you look at Bianca, there's only nine marks given to us. So we need to take all those amounts and divide it by nine. So adding up all Bianca's marks and we divide it by the amount of marks she has, which is nine, and we arrive at 58,78. So using the formula to substitute, and I've presented to you Kotso's marks for you to determine how we arrive at the interquartile range. So you find in the center, we have two numbers and we have our 60 there, which is the median after arranging the marks uh, from highest to lowest. And then we look at 68 in the upper box, a red box, and that's known as our upper quarter. And the C will be our low quarter, which is unknown at the, at the moment. So just for you to have an understanding of how the interquartile range works, so all we need to do is subtract the 68 from the C using Kotso's marks. Now, if we had to substitute these values into the formula, so we take our 16, which is given to us, that's the interquartile range from the, from the information above. Then we've got 68, which we know now is our upper quartile range. And we minus our C. This is basically simple substitution from the formula. Now in the green box, 
below that I've made C the subject of formula. So all I've basically done is taken the C and put it on the other side of the equals to, like we've done in grade 9 work of equations, and I've taken the 16 and passed it on the other side of the equals to, and then we have 68 minus 16, and we arrive at our final answer of 52. Bianca stated that Matuli performed better than she did in the practice tests. Give two possible reasons to support Bianca's statement. The easiest way we can determine who is a better performer is to look at the mean or average marks. Now we know we've worked out Bianca's average marks a little early on in one of the questions. It was 58,78%. I've listed it in the yellow writing below. And Matuli's mean mark was given to us in the information. If you look under note, uh, Latuli's um, mean mark is given to us. So comparing these two marks, we can see that Latuli, Matuli is a better performer than Bianca. The other thing we could make note of is the range in terms of the highest and lowest marks. And you can find the answer has been shown to you there in the red box. I've indicated where you can see the difference in marks and we find that uh, Bianca's range is bigger than Matuli's, so therefore Matuli was a better performer.